for our wives to sleep after reading. I love us to read the word of God standing. Proverbs 10, 22. Are we there? One, two, go. Let's read. Shout it again. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. It adds no sorrow. The blessing of God makes rich. It removes every sorrow, every cause. Can I have your seat this morning? I want to speak briefly about something. The cross of Jesus Christ, the end of every cause. Hallelujah. Amen. What is a cause? A word spoken. A decree made. But that carries power. To hold somebody to it. A negative statement made, but not just an empty word. Something that has something embedded in it to cause the recipient to go the way of the word. The same thing, the blessing, is a positive word spoken, but not just mere words. Something embedded in that word or in those words that will tend to chart the course, that will tend to lead, direct the affairs of the person the words are, are directed to or have. That's a blessing or a course. A word directed, a word spoken to somebody, but then the word has the ability to start influencing something about that person. Once it lifts above ordinary words and it has a measure of controlling power, either to bless, which is a blessing, that means a blessing is an endowment pronounced through words. So Jacob, when he was about to die, asked the two sons of Joseph to come forward. Those were his grandchildren, Manasseh and Ephraim. And he asked Joseph, so Joseph put the firstborn on the father's right hand and the secondborn. You all know the story. And the father surprised Joseph. Instead of him to put the right hand on the head of the firstborn, which should mean, according to Jewish tradition, double portion across his hand. And Joseph said, no, 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 daddy, you are blessing the younger one more than the older one. And Jacob said, yes, I know. Then the Bible says, as soon as he finished pronouncing those words, Genesis 48, the Bible says so to, today, I, because I'm rushing, I will just quote. I want to stay within the time I have. And the Bible says, when he finished blessing them, the Bible says, thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Ephraim was the second born. So the Bible said, this is how the father set the second born above the first born. Meaning that no matter what Manasseh the first born will do, his brother will be better than him. The father said, that word said is a very strong word. The same word, when God created heaven and the Bible said God set the sun in the atmosphere and it has not dropped since. So Jacob to set the lives of these two kids. He said the second one to be greater than the first one and nothing was going to change it. The only way that would change will be for Ephraim and Manasseh. Or Manasseh in particular, the firstborn who in court was cheated out of his inheritance in that sense. The only way it will change will be for Manasseh to meet somebody higher in authority than Jacob and the person will do something to him. And that's what I want to talk about today. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Because the father set him to be less, to just be smaller than his brother and he wasn't going to be doing it. He wouldn't be able to do anything about it. When these things are in motion, a man cannot remove himself from it. Causes walk the same way. And I want to explain the cross. Please hear me patiently. So those who are who will be listening to this message, don't jump into conclusion that a deliverance means I am not a deliverance. So listen very well. Because this is a generation where people jump and jump, you know, uh, show of knowledge and everything. Just listen to what we're about to say to the end. I mean, are you following me? Yes, so God said. In Genesis chapter 3, when he was angry, he began to talk to the man. And he said to the man, why did you eat? He said, the woman you gave me. And God said, you know what? You will eat, the, you will eat bread with sweat. 
He said the ground will yield to you. Genesis 13, 14, 3, 14 or what? He said it will yield. Tongues and tissue. You will have to labor. So the first sign of a curse. God said this to Adam because God was angry. The first sign is you see the person toiling, struggling where there should be favor and ease. When you see someone struggling, toiling, endlessly, something is at work. So original, that means before Adam got God angry, before God made those pronouncements, Adam never had problem with planting and reaping. The ground cooperated with him. But something happened when God spoke and sweat began. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That's God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle. Now, next verse, 15. I will put a trade. Let me rush. So you shall know. You know it's there. So, uh, because I wanted to read exactly what God said to Adam. But you have an idea. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Then we move to Genesis 49. Somewhere in between, during Genesis, Jacob had two wives, Rachel and Leah. Leah, the first wife, Rachel, the, the next wife. But then he had concubines. And his first son, jo uh, uh, Reuben, had gone to sleep with one of the concubines. And somebody saw it and told the father. And the father waited and waited till the day he was about to leave. And that was a prophetic moment. Those were not ordinary words. And he said, Reuben, come here. You are my firstborn. By arrangement, you should receive double portion of the blessing. He said, but you defy my bed. He said, you are the excellence of my might and strength. He said, but you shall not excel. So he put a cap on Reuben. That's the second sign of this thing when it's in operation. So Reuben did not know when Judah became the firstborn. Because the father said, you shall not exist. He put a cap. When a person operates below his capacity, when you know your position, but you can't seem to step in, something is at work. That was what happened to Reuben. But Reuben was blessed. It was fortunate. But then his generation, but we'll come to that later. Are you following me? Then we get to Numbers 23, or from 22. Balak was a very shrewd man. Balak was a king of Moab. He heard that Israelites were coming. And he read their CV. How water parted before them. Who can fight this great army? But then, Balak was a very spiritual man. He understood that with all the strength and the might that Israel possessed, if there was a cause, if there could be a cause on them, it would overpower them. So he called Balaam. He said, Balaam, please come. There is a mighty group of people coming. If you curse them for me, then I can fight them then. That means after the curse, their strength will win. They will not operate at the level they should. Of course, we know the rest of the story. They couldn't curse the people. But the story that I shared on where is the most pathetic. Also a sign when it's at work. Tragedy. People being set up, one issue after the other. It started with Eli. Eli was a fantastic man. But towards the end of his life, his two sons, Ophelin and Phineas, so much messed up. Oh, they were thieves stealing from the offering. Then they were raping and sleeping with women in the church, and God said, Chai. They were doing it even right in the temple. So a man of God came in 1 Samuel chapter 2, and he told Eli, he said, what your sons are doing, judgment is coming. He said, it will be so severe that there will not be a male figure left in your house in prosperity. He said, those who are doing well will die prematurely. And the one that does not die prematurely will lose his job. It will be put out of office. It will end in penury and poverty. Like I said, instead of Eli to say, Lord, I'm sorry, God is always willing to forgive. I told them on Wednesday, Adam never said sorry to God. Have you read? Have you eaten the fruit? If Adam said, I have, I'm so sorry, Lord. 
Nobody asks God for forgiveness in the Bible that God turned down. Nobody because he is merciful. But Adam said the woman. The woman to said the serpent and God didn't want to talk to serpents. God just pronounced judgment on the serpent straight. Supposing Papa Adam just said, Lord, I'm sorry. Maybe you are listening to me. You also find it difficult. Some men would rather die than to say sorry. It's a terrible sign. You want to win every argument. Even when you know you are wrong. Some men do it also. You keep arguing. You just don't want to accept that you are wrong. Adam just said the woman. If you have said sorry. When the prophet gave the message to Eli also. Instead of Eli to say. Ah. Lord forgive my sons. Eli said. A stupid word. He said, well, is the Lord. Let him do whatever he... Then Samuel wanted to sleep and God called Samuel and told Samuel another message for Eli. And God said that the iniquity of Eli, no sacrifice will take care of it. He said, his judgment is set. And Sam, Eli called Samuel, what did God tell you? And Samuel told him. Eli said the same thing. Well, well, no problem. And God said, truly, there is no sacrifice that can help these people again. And the two sons were the priests after their father, they died. Then the course started. And check all through the Bible. But the young man that pained me for, oh Abiata, oh God. He was a priest in the time of Saul, King Saul. And David was running away from Saul. And David brought the temple. And he told Abiata, excuse me sir, that's 1 Samuel 22. And he gave him bread. He gave him salt. He didn't know that there was a fallout between David and Saul. David didn't tell him. But you see, because of the word pronounced, there was a guy called Diog who was the chief sheep breeder of Saul. He was in the temple at that time. What was he doing there? This is how he works. And that is the way blessing works also. He positions everything around you to make sure that you stay within the confines of that word. What was Diog doing there? His job was that the effect of the cause positioned him there to see. And shortly after that, Saul sat down. And he said, hey, hey, I've been trying to catch one rascal called David. He's been escaping. He said, oh, you soldiers, which one of you who is sabotaging our effort here? Somebody must be giving information to David that how can soldiers not be able to catch one, one guy in town? And Diog said, excuse me, sir. I saw when David came to the temple and the priest inquired for him. And Saul said, summon, me the, summon, summon the king, uh, priest for me. And the king. And Saul said that, so you conspire against David, I'm going to kill you. And the guy said, so that I don't know what you're talking about. He used a strong voice. He said, sir, is there any servant of yours as faithful as David? Is this the first time you are sending him to me? Every time you wanted me to give a word from God, you sent David to me. I don't know that anything has happened between the two of you. He said, please, king, don't put this on me. Saul knew at that time that the guy was saying the truth. But the sword, that prophetic sword was coming. And he wasn't going to escape it. In one day, Saul killed 86 priests. The soldiers knew the guy was saying the truth for the first time, which was forbidden in the military then, even now, to say no to your commander. Saul said, kill the priest. All the soldiers put in their sword and not me. They knew that the guy was not guilty. And Saul turned to the same Diog that was there in the temple. But Diog was not an Israelite, so he didn't find it hard to do. Be careful of mixed multitude around you. So all the covenant people said to kill a priest, let it not be my sword that will dagger a priest. But so when all of them, and Paul Saul didn't punish them. He just said, Dio, since you reported, we are doing it. Because the guy was from Edom, one of the arch rivals of Israel, descendants of Lot, he brought out the sword in anger. And he killed 86 priests alone. And they went to the city and killed all the children of the priests. But one escaped called Abimelech. It was only one. He was outside. He was a Nigerian. <laughs> so he escaped. We are, we are very smart in Nigeria. I mean, we are very <laughs> Amen. So he escaped. And he went to meet David. And David said, Ah, I caused the death of your family. That did not. He said, I, he, David now said, We said, I knew that day that Diog would tell Saul. He said, Because I too saw Diog that day in the temple that day. Abimelech was with David from when he was a young boy. David raised him and later became David's priest. So Absalom created the revolt. So people fell for it like Aito fell, some of the closest guys to David, but Abimelech maintained. He followed David to run away from town into the wilderness. He suffered with David. 
But Adonijah called himself king, another son of king. And he said, I am king. Eventually, Adonijah, uh, the, when he was celebrating out of town, and people were shouting, long life Adonijah, David called Solomon. He said, sit on my throne. I will show who is the king right now. Adonijah was a small child. The Bible said the father had never rebooked him before. He was a, a child that was never corrected. So he thought that he was just going to be king. But then, the kingdom was handed over to Solomon. And Solomon said, call me Adonijah. He said, because you are my brother, I won't kill you. You are a traitor. Because if the crown king would have killed Solomon, Solomon said, I won't do that. So he said, just, just go, go away. Then Solomon, but somehow, because of that word pronounced, Abimelech found himself following Adonijah by mistake. And Solomon called his Abimelech. Abimelech said, honestly speaking with your conspiracy, I'm supposed to kill you. He said, but I remember how you suffered with my father, David. He said, I won't kill you. Resign right now and go. Exactly what the prophet said to Eli. He said, if not premature death, they will be sacked. Just when the guy should settle down with Solomon to start enjoying, I won't serve the father now, serving the son as the high priest, he was just fired. Have you seen families with stories of misfortune? I told them in the morning, during the Bible study, after years of trusting, he finally found a coach, a young boy. When we grew up, a young boy found a coach. The coach got him a trial with a club in Italy. They finally, the clubs, they sent him visa and everything to come. It was about 14 or 15 then. He was the best footballer around then. He would have made it to that club. Two weeks to his departure, something happened. He was arrested, detained till the time passed, and that was it. When I was secondary school, the fastest runner who at, from GSS2, he was faster than SS3 students in running, fell from a building and broke his ankle. At the time, the state was calling him to come and join the state athletes, just like that. And the one that was arrested said it that he said, I knew it. When they arrested, he said, I knew it. I knew that I wasn't going to go to that clinic. He said, because from generation to generation, everything a good news, something good was coming, something will happen in the family that will pull it down. The question is, should this happen to a Christian? The Bible said there is no enchantment against Jacob. Numbers 23, 23. There's no divination against Israel. But why do we have some stories happening to believers? Are you with me? Glory to God. Remember where we started from some weeks ago. The Bible says, let Satan take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. But the scripture shows us that it can take advantage even of a Christian. It does not have that power, but he has the subtlety to do so. If it's allowed. I get what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. I was led to just share this. So in case you have a believer and you notice that you are in a family, things just don't rise. You if you say, let me be honest with myself, I have confessed that I'm a new creation reality, yes, but the sincere truth is, that I, so this is not really for everybody, but you are sure that sincerely speaking, it doesn't happen to everybody. Many people are free, there's nothing, but there are people that you do know, and because it's a church, we dare not leave some people behind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, where do these things come from? In the case of Abraham, God said to Abraham, anybody that blesses his blood, whosoever causes his cause. That came from God. Joshua said when they destroyed Jericho, he said, cause be anybody that builds Jericho. So God, going against what God has laid down can be a cause. Not that God will say that I'm causing people, no. But God has set laws in motion that when it's violated, for instance, no matter where you pray in tongues, if you dishonor your parent, there is a problem. You have just walked yourself into something. Because the scripture has said that honor your father and your mother. That you, A Christian should not pray for long life. The Bible tells you about what to do about long life. Can I say this? Facebook my stops are people from living long. Honor your parents includes on Facebook. 
70 year old boy calling a 75 year old man an idiot on Facebook. I feel sorry for this generation. In the name of social media arguments, should argue with somebody make you lose your sense? Some people will go for an interview one day, they will meet the person that will interview them, somebody they've insulted for social media, and they will send them out. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, honor your father and your mother that your day may be long, that it might be well with you. So, if somebody dishonors the parents, it might not be well with the person. Yes, that one is not a demon. It's something that the person walk into by himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But the part I want to show you, a man that has God's authority, spiritual authority also, can make a statement. He ought not, but he can, that can affect people's life. This is how it works. Anybody that has any kind of authority over you, what spoken, if nothing is done by those negative words, it can have effects. Like a father, like your mother. I think in Africa we know that very well. There's a way you can hurt your mother and she can say things. I will give another example, even like a teacher. Because teacher has a legitimate authority over students. You know, course is not to say it shall not be well with you. It's not limited to that. The sub two ones are a father telling a son that he looks like of my son. You are the one that is not brilliant. He can hold that person. And I have dealt with many guys who are still struggling after 40 years of the, you know, they said most atheists actually, go and read about the issue of atheists. Most of them hated their father while growing up. Very true. And that's how many of them resent God. Any kind of authority figure. Because the first authority they saw growing up, they hated it. Down to the one you call Baba 70 and everything. It's, it's like that. So they resent God. And most atheists actually grew up in a Christian family, but with a very, very hostile, hard-hearted father. Many of them. Many of them were brought up by dickens who were beating their mom and told it will make them resent if I later resent God. And men that I meet guys that anytime you are trying to talk about God's word or they see that you're a pastor, there's already an anger and hatred. I understand. I don't get angry. It's already coming from them. Anything authority figure. Um, that's why if you're a father, be very careful the example you are laying before your kids. Teachers can say that because he has marked your exam and you scored title over 100 that you are not better, you don't know maths. Or it happened to some of us. And he can stay with you. And you think you don't know maths. He has spoken from the place of authority. When Jude was, when James was talking about this, he said, men and brethren, James chapter 3, he said, let's know. He said, with the same mouth, we bless God and we curse men made in the image of God. He was not saying that we start cursing men that you are this. No, we talk down on men, making them smaller than what God has created them to be. You are not smart. You are not brilliant. If somebody that has authority that you respect and recognize, Put a kind of limitation on you by speaking and say you don't know that you are not brilliant. I don't know you. You don't know how to. You don't, don't fit into. It becomes something. Something has to happen to those words. You have to look into the word of God to make yourself a free man. That his opinion does not bind on me. God has already spoken and God is the highest authority. Can I hear me? Amen. Are you with me? Do you know this is where fear comes from? I asked the lady. Her name is Duni. Maybe she's listening to us now. She had nine A1s in SSC. So she came for medicine in UI. She was my, my, she's my, my, my friend's uh, younger sister. So now she had the best WIAC result in SS, uh, West Africa. Then. So OBJ, in time OBJ hosted her in Asurok. So when she was in UI, I was in final year and then she was in or so. So she was in the prayer department. So I called her one day because she was also the, she was the same class with Pastor Ibele. And she was the best medical student of the year by the time they were getting 600 level. So I said, Duni, how is it that you know this? How do you, the, any exam you write, 100, 100, 100. Why some of us, we have to crack, crack, and, and then we, go, we get 65, 70. And what's happening? And then she was like, ah. She said, people always think I know everything. She said, let me tell you, the there are exams I sit, that the first five minutes, unnecessary, partially, I'm as confused as others. He said, but I have a way of telling myself that Duni, you have never failed before. You know it. Do you know that if you have failed before, especially repeatedly, it can become a serious bondage. That when you want to attempt something that you can even do, fear will set in. Have you ever wondered why players score free kick very well when it's not a very serious match? 
I remember Argentina and Germany final. World Cup, last two World Cups ago. That Messi had a free kick at the edge of box 18. That was penalty for him. But the ball went so far from the post. When they tell you that 400 million people are watching you, it will have effect on you. Ask players when they play for the first time. It can be a serious matter. One of the commanders I was hearing him is one that said was saying that they first gave me opportunity to share with people to come and cry. Said the guy told him, so I remember that I told him outside, I said, You have two minutes. He said, This is your chance. The best of people, all the network, all the TV stations are here. He said, You blow it, you've blown your life away. He said, So it's an opportunity, it's also a cost that I'm giving you. He said, I will advise if you are not, they don't take it. He said, because you can he said, but if you come out. And the people reject you. He said, all other comedians are here. Nobody will put you on stage again. Satan is wicked. He said he was sweating. You don't know what it means to stand before crowd. When they got there, he said he came out. <laughs> and he said the guy at the front was just saying, ah. he told the guy beside that, ah. He said, this guy, what? this guy will want to be small. Ah. He said the thing hit him. He said, but he just decided to start, some of you know the person I'm talking he said he decided to start the comedy with that one. The guy was a very handsome guy, very proud guy who sat at the front, who called him, but they just told the guy, you, you'll find past me, and everybody started laughing, saying that, you know, somebody not looking good, telling somebody very handsome that I, I find past you now. And the moment the people started laughing, it just started. He said, he got to the back, saying, ah, 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 and that was it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Are you with me? What should a Christian do? The cross, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. Mm, this is where it gets sweet. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Whatever anybody has said, or whatever anybody will say, when a person is in Christ, it should not have an effect. Because Jesus Christ absorbed all causes when he was on the tree. So we have become the cause of the causeless cannot come. Because somebody took all the causes for us. But here is what I want to say today and I want to hear the most important thing is you must emphasize, declare and stand on, your, on behalf of your family and for yourself. Emphasize what Jesus has done. Every spiritual thing is voice activated or voice activated is true. Until it gets to the lips of a man it does not work. When they go to uh, Egypt and God said that, okay, now I'm going to bring the final plague on Pharaoh. Kill a lamb. It was not the killing of the lamb that stopped the angel of destruction. It was the application of the blood to your post. Post and the lintel of the door. Your post is your mouth. So, are you with me? Praise the Lord. So you hear people say, we play the blood of Jesus. How do you play the blood? You don't play the blood by saying, I play the blood of Jesus. It's just a little part of it. You play the blood by talking about what the blood has achieved. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you an example. A believer, and if you are the Bible study, I already gave a warning. If you are from a family where, sincerely speaking, people in authority over you are dabbling into occultic practice and all those things, you must take a stand on behalf of the family. If you are a believer, you have that power. You don't even need any pastor. You have that authority in the word of God. But it must be addressed. And I dare say, it does not take seven days fasting. It does not take, it takes the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Glory to God. And I'm going to lead some of us to talk now. If you have noticed anything, you have authority. There are about six steps to take. The first one is to acknowledge that there's something going on that should not be happening. That's called humility. Acknowledge that, okay, this is happening. The next thing is to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ. I am born again. I'm a new creation. See, those words, they ring bells in the spirit. And in the realm of the spirit, transactions are signed by words and transactions are cancelled by words. God does not remove a cause by dealing with the cause no god removes a cause by introducing the blessing so we started by reading that the blessing of the lord he makes rich it has no sorrow so that's how god deals with have you read romans chapter 8 there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ why 
for the law of the spirit of Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. When God sees darkness, he will just introduce lights. There's no point talking to darkness. When God sees the law of sin and death operating, what he would do is to introduce the law of the spirit of life. So there is a law of gravity that whatever you throw up must come down. But the plane has defined the law of gravity because the plane operates another law. As long as the plane is operating the law of lift, law of gravity is suspended. So some planes do 12 hours if you are going to America. Some do more and they don't drop along the way because as they are cruising, they are operating another law that gravity has no answer to. There is a law of the spirit. So when people speak a word, when parents say something wrong, or when you are from the family that have put their hands into things, I, I explained during the Bible study the work of familiar spirit. Sincerely speaking, when a father is occultic and he dies, demons don't die. They hang around and they try to afflict the rest of the family. Or if somebody takes a son and he says that, you know what, I am born again. I, the blood has been shed for me on the authority of the blood. I renounce any contact this family has had with occultic power. I end the transaction now and I establish the family on a new transaction. When it is said, because wherever people go to, they make them say something. Words are powerful in the spirit. So cast a spell. They just don't look at the picture. They say some things. They call names and they say things. When somebody in that family also rises up, and it makes a declaration. One stop, something stops. If you, this is why, this is so simple. It should not be affecting believers. But I do know so many believers who are taking after what's going on in their family. Some, they think and wait for 50 years. Then they become 50 something on one untimely sickness, stroke, and this one premature death, this one, all kinds of things. And it is painful. Some will rise. Just somewhere around 60, they are coming down. In my city, I know many. I live my, my parents, you know, in my, I don't want to use my parents. So, some of my father's friends, they listen to me, so they will not think. But in my city, I have been to people's places. And I've seen parents. Between 35 and 55, they were in wealth. But just about that 55 to 60, something goes wrong. And you see them trekking around. Queen's English, masters in Princeton University and this one, what is going on? The thing must pull them back. Yeah. A professor, professor in America that God saved was able to establish the adverse effect of Freemason on the generation after when there are people get into it. What we do in the body of Christ, that's why I've shared this. Two things, two extremes. Some begin to tell people, oh yeah, several days, this bondage is hard, oh yeah, fall down, and then they, they, and then they do what the Bible does not talk about. Then those of us that belong to word of faith, we avoid it. Ah, no, no, a Christian, no, no, no. Where are there are people in churches everywhere, in Christian community, who know very well that there's something going on that they don't have control over. Am I right? Yes, have you to make believers like that? They know very well. They know. How do we explain? Six sisters. The last month, 33, none is married. How can it be? Beautiful people, how can that be? And all of them, members of the choir, how can that be? In different cities. And none of them find the man. You know, so, and somehow, pastors tend to talk, not talk about this. Because there is a debate, new creation, and then we don't want to. The first people are teaching it wrongly. You should look at the Bible and find out the truth. Jesus drove out seven demons from Mary Magdalene. I will never forget, I listen to Pastor Chris one day. I said, one of the ladies working with, she was a very wonderful lady. said, but when this anger came, he said, he too drove out seven demons from her. She was living in Pastor Chris' house. He said, the anger was stopped. She could kill in her anger. And he said, he told that one that this is not from a Christian. Something is wrong somewhere. And they had to drive out the spirit. Papa Egan established very clearly, a Christian can be tormented of devils. It is true. Are you with me? Are you with me? Praise the Lord. I remember I warned you, hey, hey, those of you that think any music goes. One of our parents just spoke to me and after the Bible study in the morning. I told her that I'm going to take up that. Do you know that there are many cartoons that are beginning to introduce children to sorcery and all those things? We need to be careful. Songs that are offered up in the name of seeking for fame will do something to your soul. 
See, we don't go about looking for devil anywhere. No, we are sanctified. We are strong from within. But that doesn't do away with the Father. We should also be careful about things you bring to your place. Be careful. Hallelujah. So many of us in word of faith, where I belong, easily say anything, anything. No, 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 no. Paul wrote, he said, I don't want you to keep fellowship with demons. He said so to believers. 1 Corinthians 10. And then John wrote, he said, little children, keep yourself from my doors. Be careful. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Don't allow what is below you to have an effect in your life. But primarily I'm addressing families where you've seen this trend. Oh, a while ago I spoke to a pastor. Even though he's a pastor in the denomination, this is wouldn't live in. Abject poverty. About three certifications, three masters. And he began to, he just broke down that what else do I do? He had done 40 days dry. I learned from there a priest. Fasting provokes your spirit but it does not expel demons. They are expelled by the authorities of spoken word. I get what I'm saying. Yes, sir. And many times there is need to say. That's why I said the steps must be taken. Acknowledge. Declare that you are in Christ now. Then you can repent on behalf of the family. Lord, I'm sorry that we went this way. Daniel did not commit anything, but he identified with the people he was praying for. He said, Lord, we have broken your law, but he never broke any. It is that what you call, it, it has, it's called into canon. When you fall in with somebody, that's what Jesus does with us. We have priests who can be taught with the feelings of infirmity. I would say he lives to make intercession for us. He identifies with our weaknesses and he helps. Say, Lord, on behalf of my family, and then renounce. That's the fourth one. I renounce any contact. It's a statement, but made in faith that my family might have had. If you know about it, mention the name. If you have been taken to a native daughter for incisions, mention the name. And it ends once and for all. I renounce a contact I, I got into by this and this and this step I took or that this step that our family has taken and it ends. And after that, begin to declare what the blood has achieved. Then stand and say in the name of Jesus Christ to this effect, I hereby cancel every transaction, everything going on and establish a new thing. Is it simple? It will shock you the tremendous effect it will have on many people. Not only you, people around you will benefit from this. I want to stop here today. Shall we rise? Is someone blessed this morning? Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You know, we never like to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Coming into Christ is beyond joining a church, is beyond a religion. It is joining God's family. And that is done when you believe in Christ Jesus. So I just want to lead you right away now. If you are, if you want to give your heart to Christ, just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again and that you paid for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And from today, I belong to you. If you have said those words, will be late. You are born again. You are part of God's family right now. You can go ahead and rejoice about it. And if you want to contact us, just check. The address is written on the screen. God bless you. We love you. Stay blessed.